Let's look at some features of the hip joint, both the ligaments and the movements. So the hip joint is a ball and socket joint. So that's from previous uh, modules. It has a, a spherical femoral head that's convex and it goes into the concave acetabulum that's on the os cocci. The acetabulum is aligned with hyaline cartilage uh, and a labrum. And the femoral head is also covered with hyaline cartilage, except uh, the fovea capitis, which is a uh, notch that we saw in the bony section. So when we're looking in, here's our os cocci, the ilium, ischium, and pubis, three bones and um, that merge into the acetabulum. And then we have the femur and the femoral head that goes into the acetabulum. So we have the transverse acetabular ligament, which is down here, and it kind of completes the acetabulum. And then you have the ligamentum teres, which is cut here and goes from the fovea capitis into the center of the acetabulum. We have three ligaments that kind of in, embrace or uh, completely surround the hip joint when the femoral head is uh, articulating with the acetabulum. We have the iliofemoral ligament, which is actually called the Y ligament. So there's two, two parts of it here. And it goes from the ilium to the femur. Again, ligaments tell you in their name, what they connect. We also have the ischiofemoral ligament, which goes from the femur to the ischium. We also see it on the uh, posterior view here, the ischiofemoral ligament. And then we have the pubofemoral ligament going from the pubis bone to the femur. And they ligaments limit motion. So it's good to know what motion the ligaments limit. Um, all three limit hyperextension or excessive extension. The iliofemoral ligament limits external rotation. So that's rotating if you're standing, if you rotate your toes out to the lateral side, that would be limited by um, the iliofemoral ligament. The pubofemoral ligament will limit abduction, right? So abduction is moving your lower limb away from the body and the pubofemoral ligament is on the medial side, which will resist that movement. The ischiofemoral limits internal rotation. So if you're standing and you, you put your weight on your heel and you rotate your, your toes toward the midline, that's internal rotation and it also limits adduction or moving your whole limb towards the midline. All right, let's look at the broader hip joint movements. And it's also always important to know the movements because then that's how you will kind of overlay the muscles which cause those movements. The hip joint, it has three degrees of freedom, so it moves in all three planes. So we have the sagittal plane, which we see hip flexion occur and hip extension. Again, hip flexion does not need to uh, also have knee, fle knee flexion. You can just have your, your knee extended and that's still hip flexion. And that is in the sagittal plane with a medial, rotating around a medial lateral axis. In the frontal plane or the coronal plane, we have uh, abduction. And in this case, if you're taking your limb and moving it away from the midline, that is an open chain movement. And we also have adduction or bringing your, your leg toward the midline. In the frontal plane again, and the axis is an anterior posterior axis. This, this might be a little hard to kind of visualize. We're looking down through the, the vertebra and through the pelvis. 
So when we uh, rotate our toes away from the midline, that is external rotation. And when we rotate toward the midline, that would be internal rotation. And it'll be easier to see in, on the next slides. So here we have on the leftmost picture, you have flexion and extension. You have AB, adduction, And then you can see you have internal and external rotation. So if you rotate where your toe is pointing laterally, that's external rotation. If your toe points in towards the medial line, that is internal rotation. So looking again at open and closed chain hip movements, um, you can have what they call long arc pelvic on hip, um, femoral hip flexion. So that's as if you're, you're reaching for your toes. So your hip is flexing and your pelvis is going into anterior tilt. Uh, long arc pelvic on hem femoral hip extension is if you are going into hip extension and with a posterior tilt of your body. And this is, again, is... And then finally, we can look at ABA deduction. Um, open and closed chain. So open chain is if you are moving your, lifting your heel and moving your leg away from the midline into abduction and adduction here. Open chain, abduction, open chain, adduction. Um, if you stand on one foot and kind of like drop your pelvis on one side, say you're standing on your left foot and you drop your pelvis to the right, that would be closed chain adduction, and if you lift that pelvis, that would be closed chain abduction.